All right, more fun with the spinning uniform charge solid sphere of radius R. We've seen this a hundred times already in this book, so we'll see it one more time here. Um, so this has a total charge of Q and is set spinning with angular velocity omega about the z-axis. Okay, again, we've seen this before. What we want to know is five parts. A, what is the magnetic dipole moment of the sphere? Find the average magnetic field within the sphere. Find the approximate vector potential at a point, r theta, where r is greater than the radius of the sphere. And, or, and D, find the exact potential at the center at a point outside the sphere and check that it is consistent with C. And finally, E, find the magnetic field at a point, R theta, inside the sphere and check that it is consistent with B. All right, we got our work cut out. Let's tackle it. All right, so the dipole moment of the shell, which was previously found, is M equal 4 pi r 4 pi over 3 sigma omega r to the fourth z at okay we can kind of see this geometrically speaking okay so if we let big r go to little r and sigma go to rho dr since it's solid uh, and we can integrate this out we see that we have m equal 4 pi over 3 omega rho z hat and we integrate from 0 to capital r of little r to the fourth dr. Okay, pretty simple integral there. But we know that rho itself is q over the volume of a sphere, so q over four pi, capital R cubed. And we see we get a ton of cancellations. The four over three pi cancels, and we get uh, r cubed canceling with uh, r to the fifth, leaving us with a grand total of m equal one fifth q omega r squared in the z hat direction all right now we know from the previous problem that the b average is equal to mu naught over four pi two m r cubed so if we plug in m we see we get another set of cancellations here with the r's and we simplify down to mu naught over four pi two q omega over five r in the z hat direction fair enough we also know that the vector potential with relation to the magnetic mono, with the magnetic dipole, excuse me, there's no monopole, is mu naught over 4 pi uh, m sine theta divided by little r squared phi hat. Okay, so if we plug in m again here, we see we get this expression. Uh, again, just put that in from part a. Now we get to verify these results with the next step. So the potential of a shell with uh, capital R going to little r and sigma going to rho dr, again, similar trick, then we'll integrate out. Um, we need to find this potential, which we do. Uh, once we integrate out and simplify, we end up with the vector potential A equal mu naught over 4 pi q omega r squared over 5 sine theta little r squared phi at direction. All right, cleaned up, nice, ready to go. This is identical to C, okay, big surprise there. Evidently, the field is a pure dipole for points outside the sphere. That is pretty nice to have and will definitely come up again. Part E, previously we found uh, that the magnetic field of these dipoles was written as such. Uh, you've seen this in the text or in other problems, so I'm not going to read it off. But uh, the average obviously points in the z direction, you know, because of cancellations of symmetry. So we need to take the z component of r hat, which is cosine, and the z component of theta hat, which is negative sine. Remember, these unit vectors are messy. Go back to the definitions in the book. Okay, now we can calculate the average field. We do this by setting, uh, going back to the definition of the average field, which was uh, 3 over 4 pi r cubed integral b d tau. All right, I had to break this up into segments because it got really tedious. So we plug in b, and we get mu naught omega q over 4 pi capital R times 3 over 4 pi r cubed. So we get some uh, times the integral, which was a three-dimensional integral, again, of a sphere. So 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi, 0 to capital R for dr d theta d phi with the r squared sine theta as our Jacobian measure. 
All right, so we chugged it through. We simplify, and again, thanks to Fubini, we can take the phi integral by itself, and we get a factor of 2 pi, which cancels with the 16 pi squared in the denominator to 8 pi. Um, we can also distribute the r squared into each of the arguments for the r integral, and then we can evaluate the r integral in the next step. Uh, notice that we get r cubes and r fifths, and we have to simplify them down with the appropriate uh, cancellations. And then we see uh, that every term eventually has an r cubed term, which is the, the capital R cubed term, which is that term is a uh, constant, so we factor it out. This r to the r cubed term cancels with uh, factors of r to the fourth in the denominator. Uh, so in the next step, that's why we don't see it. We also note that simplifying these uh, terms in the parentheses down, we get 16 over 75 plus 7 over 75. Okay, um, let's go ahead and factor out a 1 over 75 as well. Uh, note that we can also write uh, sine, theta, sine squared theta as 1 minus cosine from the Pythagorean identity. And that's what we see in the integral, just to get us down. And then after that, we just evaluate the integral. Uh, we see we get some cancellations again once we simplify. Um, after that, we note that we uh, have just 20, which simplifies the 200 in the denominator. And that leaves us with mu naught omega q over 10 pi r, which is the same as b. So we're good to go yet again.